there folks, welcome to Kingston Park where I'm absolutely ashamed to say the weather conditions, they're not much better than they were at Barrow at the weekend. Uh, Rumour has it, the kits are still being washed over in the east end of Kingston Park. But forget about that, from one Cumbrian opposition to another, it's the visit of Whitehaven to the northeast this weekend. And that can only mean one thing, it's the return of a big preview. And this is what's coming up on today's show. Yes, we reflect on that rainy result in Barrow and look ahead to hopefully a sunnier Saturday against Whitehaven. We catch up with another one of our new Thundermen. Josh Eves sits down with me to discuss the season so far. And three weeks into the new season, how are we looking injury-wise? We find out with head physio Paul Miller. Lots to get through then, so let's get right into it. The weekend just gone, it was a second trip of the championship season and a second trip to Cumbria. We beat Workington, of course, first time out in the first weekend of the championship season, but it was always going to be a difficult test in biblical conditions against the resurgent Barrow Raiders side. <laughs> So, not to be against Barrow then, but guess what? More Cumbrian opposition this weekend. Whitehaven, of course, the visitors to Kingston Park, as we've already pointed out. It's our second home fixture of the season. So let's take a look at the story so far. So Whitehaven it is here at Kingston Park on Saturday as we aim for our first home win of the season and our second two-pointer. But how much do you really know about Haven for 2022? Allow us, as usual, and take a look at this week's In Opposition. I'll tell you what, why don't we stop focusing on the opposition and focus on ourselves. We always try and sit down or stand up with one of our Thunder players before each week's game. We got Gideon both only a couple of weeks ago and we've selected another one of the new Thunder men. Decided not to go outside with the wind swirling, but I managed to sit down with Josh Eves to discuss the start of the season and how he's enjoying his time at the Newcastle Thunder so far. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, I'm really enjoying it away from rugby, obviously. Um, there's a group of us who live together in the apartments. I live with um, another five lads, um, JJ, Brad Gallagher, Connor Bailey, Pat and Gids, and we all get on really well, both on the field and off the field. Whenever we're away from training, we're all always doing things together, like even just going for a coffee or going for little walks and that. Yeah, so I'm really enjoying it away from the field and all. Gids was talking about this just a couple of weeks ago about the flat and about what it's like, etc. Who's the best, who's the worst flatmate that you've got currently? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, I know what Gids said on this, Larry. He loves us all, so, but I'll, I'll give a controversial opinion. Probably, uh, no, I'll get on with them all, yeah. We're all like best mates, all like... I know it sounds like cheesy, but yeah, we're all, we're all brothers at the end of the day and that. But uh, yeah, I get on quite well with JJ. Me and him just seem to click, bounce off each other, similar type of personalities. He's either up to something and I'm joining in or the other way around and vice versa. But yeah, and uh, obviously I'm not going to say a worse flat, mate. But no, we all we do like winding a um, pat up. So yeah, we do like winding pat up. But no, like I said, we're all thingy. And Pat started giving it back recently, which I'm really enjoying. So I want him to give it. Pat, this is a shout out for you. I want you to give me it more back, please, mate. Kids also uh, pointed out that Brad Gallagher has a, has a weird habit of trying to scare the living bejesus to put it mildly out of every single housemate is that still ongoing yeah well yeah he started off doing that in our flat but like we kind of quickly shut that down because he, he is so loud you can hear him straight away you know he's up to something so but he's moved on to his uh, next culprits who live next door matty nick um alex sutton and lewis peach and he actually got peachy last night we were, we were blind and it got showed in team meeting this morning but yeah you can certainly hear them it, he's literally he'll hide anywhere and he's and he'll just jump out on you but yeah it, that's his party trick at the minute yeah but he won't do it he won't do it to none of us because we'll, we'll, we'll knock him down a peg or two <laughs> at least he's been kicked out of your flat for that yeah you talk about like you know showing things like in the team meeting i understand you've been behind the camera a little bit what's that been like for you kind of away from a rugby pitch but doing yeah. a little bit of extracurricular stuff as well yeah no i mean i enjoy that that type of thing like, I, let's say i'm an outgoing person quite quite a bit of a confident person around and there's certainly some confident characters in, in the group and that so yeah we just want to promote the game along with um, giving people like an insight to what we are as type of personalities just not just on the training pitch but like around like doing things so yeah we've uh, we've had a chat with obviously andy the media fellow and we just want to portray ourselves as like them rugby players are both on and f on the field and off the field but yeah so hopefully we've got get a few more ideas out i know jj and uh, mully's keen to they're always got some ideas especially mully's always got something up his sleeve i won't even go into that hmm. uh, i'm sure a lot of you wanted to be off the field on sunday probably the one of the worst conditions i've ever seen in a rugby league game in any form of sport what the heck was that like to play in on Sunday? Oh yeah, it was, it, it was difficult to play. Obviously, we, we rocked up there. And we, we were looking. We were all looking at the picture. A lot of the boys put on the social media saying, "Oh, we're playing on farmers' fields and that." But um, yeah, it, it was difficult conditions. But we, we've come. We're, we're not one of them groups who like to make excuses. Up. We were. We were disappointed as a collective, and Freddie expressed his disappointments after the game. And we want to put them wrongs right this week against when we're moving on to Whitehaven and that. So yeah, even though obviously the conditions were bad, you can think yeah, we, we, we were very disappointed with our performance at the weekend and we're looking to improve on that this weekend, certainly against Whitehaven on Saturday. You mentioned kind of righting the wrongs. What wrongs were they? I, th I, th I think uh, it's, it's, it's well, not been well documented, but we can see our, our discipline's not been up to the standard. We, we've had, obviously, we've spoke about it individually and as collective and that, and our discipline has got to improve, obviously. Regardless, yeah, we have got some fiery characters and it's about whether we want to fire them up, and but you've got to rein them in sometimes, and, I, and I, I, I'm one of them. I, I do sometimes lo like lose my head in that, but yeah, obviously, um, yeah, so discipline is probably the probably the biggest one. I know we've talked about the, the kind of the individual characters of the team, but how much of an opportunity is this to show the character of the collective group to bounce back from that Barrow defeat against Whitehaven this weekend? Oh yeah, massive mate. Yeah, we spoke about it as, as when we came in for re reviewing that, and we've had we've had a couple of meetings preview on Whitehaven, and, and that that is the talk. We've, we've not we've not focused much on Whitehaven. We've looked at the key players and the strengths. Obviously, they come off a back, good win against London away. And that, but yeah, it'd be massive for us this week, especially. We're, I think we're wearing our new home kit this week, and that. So all the boys are pumped for that. We had our media day yesterday. All the boys really happy with both home and away kits, and we're really looking forward to getting out there, wearing it, and wearing it with pride, and putting a few wrongs right.
and um, yeah, hopefully sending the fans home with a win. Yeah, you mentioned the fans. Obviously, you know, we've had one home game. It was a pretty disappointing defeat against Batley. It could have swung either way that one. How important is it to kind of keep getting the fans back on side with a win this weekend? And how have you kind of experienced the fans so far? Would you say? Oh yeah, the fans have been great. They've been they've come in the numbers. Obviously, they didn't shut up at all last week when we were playing Barrow. As you touched on, the the conditions were awful, but they, they, they were very vocal and that. And the massive for us, all the boys. We've spoke about how obviously there's a lot of boys from out the area, but we want to get that. We want to connect with the city here, and the fans are massive. They've they've come here, and we, we want to show them both on the field how connected we are with them, and as well as off the field. So yeah, the fans have been great for us, and I know. Obviously, they'll be a bit disappointed, like we are, with the results, what, what's happened these past two weeks. But, yeah, um, we will be putting them right this weekend. Well, great to sit down with Josh there. But uh, now it's time to check out how we're looking injury-wise. So, for the first time this season, we're going to hear from our head physio, Paul Miller, in this week's treatment table. My name is Paul Miller, I'm the head physio here at Newcastle Thunder. Welcome to the treatment table. So as you'll have noticed, the Kuma has been missing in the first couple of games this season. Um, we're still managing his knee problem that's been going on since the end of last season. Um, at the moment we're looking for um, an estimated return in around about four to six weeks time. Just one of our new signings over the summer, uh, Brad Day. Um, Brad has been recovering from an Achilles tendon repair. He's doing really well. Um, we're progressing him back into full training at the moment, so we're looking for him to be available for selection in the next two, three weeks of time, most of um, Jake Shorrox has been out. Um, he failed the um, head injury assessment in the game, um, the last home game that we had here. Um, he's returning through that process at the moment. The RFL have changed it this year to an 11 day return to play, um, so he's progressing quite nicely through that at the moment. So, James Chapelhow um, had a um, an ongoing problem with his shoulder that we've managed over kind of the close season. Um, he was returning really nicely with his shoulder problem, but unfortunately picked up a little bit of a, uh, an inflamed elbow, which has set us back a couple of weeks. But he's back in full training again now, so we're looking to then have him available for selection in the next two to three weeks or so. Well, that is you up to speed injury-wise, and that is us, sadly, out of time for this week's big preview. Many thanks to Paul Miller and to Joshies for stopping by. But for you, you've got one task and one task only. Get yourselves down here 3pm on Saturday to Kingston Park for the visit of Whitehaven. Bring yourselves, bring anyone who'll listen. We're trying to pack the park as we face Cumbrian opposition once again. But for now, I've been Andy Sixsmith. This has been the big preview. We'll see you on Saturday.